So since you mentioned uh, other past lives, one of my questions was to ask you about uh, your past life as Sai Baba. So I was so I was in uh, in India this past year. I, I had a pretty epic trip. I spent seven months in Asia. Yeah. And you see Sai Baba uh, images all over. Uh, really? Shop. Yeah, yes. I mean, Sai Baba is very highly revealed. The, 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 the um, uh, Shirdi Sai Baba. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so I was, I was, uh, I went on this awesome hike up above Dharamsala, which is where the Dalai Lama lives, and it's also a popular tourist spot. And um, went on this awesome trek, and then you end up uh, with a spectacular view. And there was a little shrine up there, and um, inside the shrine were. Uh, an image of, uh, or images of, of four different deities, I believe, and I forget exactly, but I think it was, you know, Krishna, Shiva, and Vishnu, and then Sai Baba. So Sai Baba <laughs> was the only one that was an actual person, you know, or I mean that we, you know, know of. Um, and so Sai Baba is very, very highly revered. Uh, so, what is your, is your memory of, thi of, of that life? as clear to you as your memories of this life? Yes. yes. Wow. Just feels, I remember them with the same kind of clarity that you would remember being 16 or 17. Wow. And, uh, and what was, what was kind of your, could you say what your intention of that, of that life was? <laughs> My intention was to find an end to suffering. <laughs> it seems to be like an ongoing trend. I mean, ultimately, that's what you know. All spiritual teachers uh, are trying to do that come to Earth, one way or another. In that life, I did. I was able to do a lot more grassroots work. Basically, in the in the place that I essentially owned. Basically, people would get dropped off there nonstop. So I was doing a lot more on a one-on-one -on -one personal basis with people, because my I mean, and, and, and a lot of that, of course, changes because the modern world changes. But back then, they used to drop off people if you, they couldn't take care of them, and the place to take them is obviously like a temple or some other type of a spiritual or likewise religious type of a location because obviously you can guarantee that people of the cloth <laughs> or lack thereof cloth are going to take care of people who are disenfranchised. So there were a lot of cripples that were dropped off, there were a lot of people with diseases that were dropped off, there were orphans that were dropped off and most of my job in that life, honestly, if people want to know the true story, was trying to deal with all of that. And I had, I had a hell of a temper, too, by the way. Did you? Yes. So what was that about, do you think? I felt in that life... Okay, I'm letting you into the shadows. I felt in that life as if um, my ideas were never understood. Especially, and this is part of why I got so excited this time about reincarnating here in America, is because here you deal with serious irreverence. <laughs> But the upside of the irreverence is that people really take responsibility for themselves and they don't separate themselves from from spiritual stuff, from God. But my frustration in that life was that if you say anything, it's all about you. Like there's a there's a reverence they have in those countries for spiritual teachers. You see, because yeah, because of the, the different culture. Yeah, so you'd say, this is what we need to do, and then they say, oh, you can do it for me, you're amazing, then you do this for me, and then they make you into a god, or a saint, and, and you're, they're missing the point, and so there's a frustration, it's almost like there's a lack of ability to communicate in that life with people about their true capabilities, because they don't want to actually own that, they'd rather stay stuck in the place where there are people who are better, and I'm just in a lowly position, and it's like a state of powerlessness which they were addicted to, and that frustrated me. But, um, and it's also, it's ultimately part of why a gr multiple of us who were participating in that perspective um, decided to pull out and not do the next incarnation of, of that particular um, individuated consciousness. Meaning that when, when Shirdi reincarnated as Sathya, a lot of us pulled out 
And now, of course, this is difficult for people to understand because we don't see consciousness like a river, but that's how it is. So you have a, a main river, which is really big, but that river might be comprised of multiple streams of consciousness. So I could, so multiple streams of consciousness can participate in one perspective. So often spiritual teachers are a, a grouping of consciousness. So when a when a when one consciousness or one intention really continues to a next life, meaning this intention has moved from Shirdi Sai Baba to Satya Sai Baba, then sometimes only a portion of those soul streams, see how I just did that, a portion will continue, and these ones will not. They'll go into other incarnations. That's what I decided to do. That's why I did not participate in Satya Sai Baba. There was a, in that particular perspective, there was a major rift that happened, if you want to know the honest truth. Yeah, so what, you mean uh, over, like, the effectiveness that you could have? Or? Yes. The rift was specifically this. There's this thing called a city ability. And it's the, it's when you, when your consciousness transcends, you now have the capability of doing all these amazing things that we've heard about, like changing water into wine and walking on water and performing miracles, right? Now, a portion of us that were part of the Shirdi Sai consciousness agreed that that was about the dumbest thing you could do to someone. Because what we started realizing was that every time we performed miracles, it actually made people feel less close to this, their own godhood nature. And they've turned you into God. Now they become more powerless. Now if you're a good teacher, how can you justify making other people feel more powerless while putting yourself on a pedestal? So, so what some of us did was, hell no, we're not in alignment with that, we're pulling out because the majority of consciousness, of the consciousness stream participating that went on to Satya Sai Baba basically thought that that was the best way to show people that they were not limited by the physical dimension, that all things are an illusion, basically. So that was the, the decision which caused me to split off from that particular train of consciousness and to continue into this embodiment and other portions to continue into Satya Sai Baba. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, so basically, basically, it's, those can be a distraction. It sounds like city abilities. Obviously, if I'm in this perspective, I think it's a, not only a massive distraction. I think it actually damages people. Yeah. Because so, they're not thinking about their their emotional, mental, soul. Exactly. So, so while I, I'm never going to sit up here and say that Satya Sai Baba is, has no merit, because obviously it's like there's a portion of myself that did continue there, something I relate to at least, um, the rest of me shakes my head. Yeah, at, 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 at why he was kind of, uh, kind of bullheaded on that. Yeah, and it, it, it just like the mass of worship. Worship is, I mean, appreciation is a very different vibration from worship. Worship destroys lives. So I have a very hard time with people that perpetuate that worship in their followers, if you catch my drift. Yeah, because it just creates more separation and yeah. makes people feel inadequate. And, exactly. Yeah.